Who exactly should be allowed to fetishize black men? You see here, you have an article uh, that a non-black woman, non-black person is writing about black men, black men being fetishized on TikTok by white women. TikTok, for those who don't know, is a Chinese app, but a lot of Americans, primarily for what, I'm, for what I could tell, uh, use the app. Now you do see, um, typically it's white women, uh, sometimes will be Hispanic and Asian, but typically the, the main ones that you'll see will be white women talking about how much they like black guys. And you know, the, the, the attributes that they list will range anywhere from physical traits to personality traits, okay? Now, my question is, especially in this day and age that we live in, how is this any different from what black women have been doing for decades and generations? And see, here's the thing. Who exactly should be allowed to fetishize, uh, especially on an individual level, to each and every individual brother, what amount of attention and the type of attention that you may get from any particular woman, uh, how will how was that necessarily deemed as warranted and when does it maybe cross the line to where it could become harassment? Now, I can tell you myself as a black man, there's been encounters over my lifetime by women of various different ethnicities and a number of different age groups where if I had approached a woman in the same way that they did me, if I would have said things, done things, you know, including physical contact, if I would have done those things to them that they have done to me, especially being a black man, it would have been deemed a sexual harassment. But in general, women get to get away with doing things to guys that guys, at least nowadays aren't supposed to be able to do with women and the guy who's going to get it the worst is going to be the black man so to keep with um, all of the different areas where we could talk about black male agency when it comes to social interaction policies uh, and dealing with various different women black men are the ones who need to set what the standard is and i don't think that every black man in the United States, all black men across the world are gonna come up with some consensus of what should be appropriate treatment and appropriate behavior. That's probably gonna be something for every man to decide for himself. But black men in general needs, need to be the ones to speak up for ourselves and say what is allowed and what's not allowed. Uh, where is the boundary and when do you cross the lines? Because isn't that what women have done okay now simply the way that we are as men you know we tend to not make so much of a big deal about these things as women do we don't take it the same way you know using myself for example you know um things that women have done to me in those circumstances it just kind of rolled off the backside you know but women in those same circumstances would have taken it to another level so Every man is gonna to have to decide for himself what he accepts, how he handles certain situations. But once again, who exactly and how exactly is allowed to decide how black men are to be treated and how black men are, are supposed to be fetishized? And the answer to that is simply black men. We should decide and set the standard for women, you know, women in general, or the women that you just simply end up dealing with we should be the one to decide those things. This isn't something for the community to speak up as a whole. This isn't something that black women um, really have the right to tell black men what we should think about it. It's not even necessarily something that one black man should tell another black man um, what should be the situation. You know, We have to decide this somewhat collectively, but also individually. Okay, so um, moving forward, this is simply a black man's issue. It's a black man's space. Uh, black men should be the only ones speaking about this and commentating it. We don't need anyone else to speak on our behalf. We don't need non-black women doing it. We don't need black women doing it. 
we can certainly speak up for ourselves. We can we can certainly defend ourselves. We don't need anyone else sticking up for us. You know, I myself I can judge when a woman of any um, of any ethnicity likes you for you, or likes you simply because certain physical traits or certain perceptions. I guess if that's what we want to call it. So once again, in the black community, we know that black women have fetishized hair and waves and facial hair, height and physique and endowment and different things like that. Black women have fetishized that about black men for a very long time. In fact, I think recently there was a spring break video that um, some brother had done asking, does a black man have the right to refuse his woman in the bedroom? And the women were asking, basically no like you don't get a choice you don't get a vote you don't get a say if you want to tell me no either that means something is wrong with you that you're gay or I'm gonna rape you so um, and that's definitely very aggressive coming from women if a man were to say those same things to a woman it would be considered to be a violent sexual threat okay so if everything's gonna be even Steven and if everything's gonna be 50 50 down the line then that means that women should treat men, particularly black men, the same way that women have set the standard that they should be treated by men. So no one should be fetishizing or commenting about a black man's looks and physical attributes unless he has given his consent. The black man will decide what the rules are. And this is what black man empowerment and black man advocacy should look like.